Hey guys, I'm Mike, and today we're gonna to introduce the last car in the Winter Beater Challenge, my Porsche 944. This car is in 1983, which is the first year we got the 944 in the States. These early cars prior to 85 shared a lot with the 924. So the interior is pretty much the same, a lot of suspension parts are the same. Uh, it's basically just the, the box flares that are a little different. Um, it has a 2.5 liter all aluminum four cylinder, which is an eight valve, made about 150 horse at the crank when it was new. Uh, the most interesting thing about these cars is that they're a transaxle setup. So the transmission is actually in the back of the car and there's a big torque tube down the center to distribute power. So weight balance is really good on these. I think it's 50 and change and 49 and change front to rear. So they're a lot of fun for that time period. I had actually been looking for a 944 for a little while. So this one popped up on Craigslist. So we went to go take a look at it. Uh, it hadn't been on the road in a long time. Supposedly the owners had 15 years and it looked like it. The interior was growing moss, you know, there's no clear coat left, the tires are dry rotted, but all the, overall it's pretty solid. There was no real rust. Uh, and the only other thing I cared about was that the timing belt wasn't broken, so it didn't have bent valves. Um, so I paid a little over 500 bucks for it and I brought it home and started tearing into it. Like I said, it hadn't been on the road in a long time. So it was kind of a question as to why it was off the road in the first place. So my first concern was to make sure I didn't make anything worse. So I did a water pump and timing belt just as preventative maintenance and then started digging into it. I quickly realized that the fuel pump wasn't working. So I threw a fuel pump at it and it actually fired right up and we had a running car. So shortly after that, took it on its first road test, all excited to reveal every other issue that it had. I quickly learned that the brakes didn't really work and the suspension was all blown out. So blown out to the fact that the battery ended up jumping into the hood and blowing a hole in it. Um, third and fourth gear ground. So I was gonna try to ignore that throughout this winter beater challenge. But I really wanted a welded diff because open diffs are awful. So I changed the synchros while I was in there. One of my favorite things about the car is the uh, rubbery spoiler. It's fun. But the big glass hatch has kind of been a pain. Uh, the little latch pins uh, weren't great to begin with and you know 35 years later they're, they're no better. So I ended up abandoning them and going to some Amazon uh, rubber draw latch things. Um, but there's actually a fair amount of space in here for things. I still haven't gotten around to doing these uh, hatch struts, but I do have an inconvenient ski pole to make sure I precariously open the hatch and sometimes hit myself in the head with it. The universal hood pop ski pole works in the front as well because I still haven't done these struts either. But uh, jam that past the headlight and that's usually fairly stable. This is my least favorite part of the car, it is the uh, 2.5 liter, four cylinder, eight valve, aluminum block engine. Uh, the aluminum block's kind of neat, but otherwise it's just slow. Uh, the other thing you might notice under here is my fix for the battery. Uh, you might remember, on my, I mentioned earlier that uh, on one of my early test drives, I had the battery out of my Audi in it and it jumped up and burnt a hole in the hood. So I ended up going with one of these AGM uh, lightweight batteries and make it a nice little aluminum bracket for it. Probably my second favorite part of this car, other than the nice box flares, would be this little uh, Porsche crest that hides the glove box keyhole. It's the little things that keep me excited. Uh, otherwise, it's not too much in here to be excited about, but there's not too many features either. Um, back seats are kind of a joke. I rigged out the carpets so they're nicer, but they're still not great. The vinyl seats aren't doing so hot these days. Uh, the cold weather is really taking a toll. Every time you sit on them, when they are super cold, they just kind of shatter and do this everywhere. Um, I like the nice independent gauge pods. It's kind of a, an older car feel that I enjoy. Uh, I put a newer video head unit in it so I can at least listen to things that aren't the four cylinder. Um, the shifter, pretty sloppy. That's first gear, but you can find all the gears. It's 
just doesn't inspire a ton of confidence. I put in this uh, five panel mirror here just because I didn't have one to begin with. It's a little inconvenient and you mostly see your forehead, but gets the job done. As you might expect for a little over 500 bucks, this car has its fair share of uh, dings and dents. This one came with the car. I hammered it out a little bit, but uh, pretty much as it came. I've caused a few too. This one, you know, we actually did uh, filming another episode, which you'll see at some point, but it's okay. Uh, otherwise, it's not terrible. The sunroof leaked when I got it, and that's why the interior was moldy and gross. So I vinyl wrapped it in a hasty attempt to seal it up, um, which worked great until it got really cold out and the vinyl started splitting around that seam. Now it leaks again. So I'll have to deal with that at some point. Uh, the other thing you might notice is the red paint showing through here. This quarter and that door were off a different car. And this car at some point got a salvage title way back when. Looks to have been done fairly well, so I'm not really worried about it. As I'm sure you've noticed, this isn't exactly your normal 944. Uh, the most obvious difference is these tires. These are 215, 75, 15 General Grabber AT2s. Uh, I kind of like to blast around on dirt roads and have a different kind of fun than the rest of these guys, so I went a little bit of a different direction. Putting larger tires on a car like this isn't really that difficult. The hard part is making sure you have space for them in all the different suspension conditions. Uh, in order to figure that out, I took the springs out and compressed everything as far as I could to full compression. That way I know the, the strut is bottomed out so I can use all of my travel. And then it was time to figure out what was stopping the tires. I hammered out everything I could to make space, but I ended up having to make longer control arms to get full steering angle without the tire getting to, into the inner frame. With that figured out, I ended up focusing on the coilovers. So I Googled kind of the corner weights for these cars and picked the ballpark spring rate. The next thing was to figure out if I could compress that spring the full seven and a half inches I had for the strut. Um, I ended up having to go to a 14 inch spring to avoid coil bind, which is when each individual coil butts up against itself and can't compress any further. Um, with that figured out, I was able to start fabricating the coilovers themselves. So I could weld on the sleeve for the adjusters and the clamp for the actual spindle. To be honest with you guys, I have bigger plans for this car once the winter beater challenge is over. Next up, we'll be dealing with this four-cylinder issue. So if you guys want to see more of that content, uh, comment below, and hopefully we'll see you soon.